This is the Citroen C5X. It's the biggest and most luxurious car in the French manufacturer's lineup. But what is it? What does it do? And is it going to be any good? We're going to show you outside, inside, and talk you through all the key details of this car. But before we start, make sure you're subscribed to our channel if you want to see lots of other new car reviews and reveals just like this. And if you want a great deal on your next car, then go to whatcar.com. Right now, in fact, you can save more than £2,500 off the Citroen C3 Aircross. Just click on the link to go straight to our deals. So what is the Citroen C5X? Well, the first thing to point out is that this is a pretty big car. Citroen already has the C5 Aircross in its lineup, which is a large SUV, and this car has the same underpinnings as that SUV. It's also got the same underpinnings as quite a few other cars as well, including the Peugeot 5008. But the C5X is actually longer by quite a bit than the C5 Aircross, and it's even longer than the seven seat 5008. So is the C5X an SUV? Well, not really, but then is it just a kind of regular hatchback? Not really either. Citroen is saying that this is more like a coupe SUV because you've got this swooping roof line to go with a slightly jacked up stance that the car has. It's similar in styling terms to what we've seen with the Citroen C4. And if you wanna watch our full review of that car, just click on the link at the top of the screen. All of that means that the C5X is up against quite a few different cars, isn't it? Because you're not only looking at rivals like the Skoda Superb and the VW Passat, which actually have quite similar dimensions to the C5X, but it's also possibly gonna be up against some SUVs like the 5008 and also the Skoda Kodiak. Now, styling-wise, the front end is very Citroen, isn't it? It's got a very familiar look to other new models that we've seen recently from Citroen, mainly because of these V-shaped headlights that you get at the front here. And by the way, LEDs come as standard. And also, if you look around the car, you might be able to spot quite a few chevrons, which is, of course, inspired by the badge. Every C5X gets 19-inch alloys as standard. You can't get any smaller or bigger ones, but there is a choice of two different designs, although the choice is made for you depending on which trim you go for. There's a choice of six different colors, and this blue that you see here is actually a no-cost free option, which is still metallic. You can also go for a two-tone finish, which gives you a black roof, but even if you don't, so if you want the whole of the car in one color, this A-pillar here will still be black. Similarly, at the back, this bit will always be blacked out regardless of the paint scheme that you go for to give it a kind of floating roof look. But if you like this particular design that you see here, then that's only available on the top trim level. But every C5X gets two spoilers. Citroen wants this new flagship model to make people think of previous iconic efforts. But what do you think? Tell us in the comments below, which is the best looking car? Is it the C5X, the CX or the C6? By the way, there are three trims that you can choose from. So the range starts with entry level Sense Plus. Above that, you've got Shine, and the range topping version is called Shine Plus. The options are nice and simple because you can't really add many. You can add a panoramic sunroof, some roof bars, and you can also upgrade the stereo system, but that's about it. The trim you go for also decides what upholstery you get in your C5X. So if you go for entry level Sense Plus, then you get a leather effect interior. And if you go for Shine, then you get a part leather interior with also some metal effect trims here and there as well. On this range topping Shine Plus model, you get a full leather interior as well as this wood effect here and there on the dashboard and on the doors as well. Plus in this range topping model, you can also as an option go for ventilated and massaging front seats too. Now every C5X of course gets a touchscreen infotainment system as standard. If you go for the entry level model then you get a 10 inch screen but the other two trims get this bigger 12 inch screen. Now this is a pre-production Citroen C5X so we can't make any conclusive verdicts on how good this system is but it does look quite different to other systems that we've used before. So it's got a different layout. They seem to be quite keen on having these fancy swiping graphics from one thing to another. It's reasonably responsive, but it does seem to be a little bit overcomplicated jumping from menu to menu. But still, we'll have to get a full production ready C5X before we can really tell you exactly what the infotainment system's like. What you do get, and actually a first for Citroen, is wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard. But even better than that, 
The best news perhaps in this interior, like the C4, is that you've got physical controls for the air conditioning. They haven't just taken these simple, easy to use dials and buttons and just hidden them in a complicated fiddly touchscreen like loads of other manufacturers have done. So that's great. You also get a seven inch digital driver display as standard and it's a nice big screen, very easy to read, good clear graphics. And there's also a big head up display in the C5X as well. Now this is quite new for Citroen because previously if you had a Citroen with a head up display it would have a little screen that would pop out of the dashboard and reflect the graphics off that as your head up display but now that's gone and instead it's projected into the air onto the windscreen as if it's on the road in front of you so it just looks a bit cleaner and actually an interesting fact the C6 also had a head up display that didn't have a pop up screen it was also just projected into the air like this although it wasn't quite so slickly done with the graphics of the time. Other tech includes front and rear parking sensors and a reversing camera as standard. Plus, now for the first time in a Citroen, you can get a 360 degree camera. Previously, you can only get a 180 degree camera with the Citroen. Now, the quality in here actually feels really good. We are in a range topping model, but the look, the feel of everything is really good. It's nice and durable, well screwed together, all has a nice squish to it. It's definitely impressively done in here. And if you think that this is up against cars like the Skoda Superb and the VW Passat, even compared to those pretty decent interiors, it does feel quite nice in here. And what Citroen also gives you are their comfort seat things, which basically is a 15 millimeter memory foam that sits underneath the surface of the seats to just try and make it a bit more comfortable. And again, to try and make this a nice, relaxing and quiet interior, you get front and rear laminated acoustic windows as well. But of course, we'll have to drive the car to see exactly how effective they are at making it nice and quiet in here. In terms of storage in here, the door bins aren't massive, but you've got more storage on this center console here, as well as two cup holders. And under this central armrest, if you go for a petrol C5X, then you get quite a lot of room underneath it, supposedly, because if you go for this plug-in hybrid version, then actually there's apparently a small battery that has to live under here. So it's a much shallower space that you've got there, but it still is decent and useful to have. Space in the back of the C5X is really pretty good actually. I'm just under six foot. The driver's seat's in my driving position and you can see I'm actually struggling to reach the driver's seat from here. I've got absolutely loads of legroom. It's very, very good for that. Headroom is okay. There's a bit of clearance above my head, but it's not amazing. And some of this car's SUV rivals will just offer a bit more space for headroom and rear passengers there. You can also see that with this optional sunroof, you've got a bit of a bulge in the roof lining just in front of your head as well, but that's no great issue really. This is still quite good for space in the back. Now, it's not quite as good as a Skoda Superb, but that is one of the biggest cars around and offers some of the most generous rear passenger space of any car. So it's not a great shame that it's not as big as that and it definitely doesn't feel cramped or uncomfortable back here. You also get three USB-C ports as standard with the C5X. That's two in the front and one in the back, but that's only on the entry-level trim. The two trims above it get an extra USB-C port in the back as well. It is a shame though that you can't slide or recline these rear seats for just a bit of extra luxury and convenience. At 545 litres, the C5X has a pretty decent boot, but that is for the petrol model. If you go for this plug-in hybrid, then the overall capacity is dropped down to 485 litres because the big battery that that model gets takes up quite a bit of room under the boot floor back here. So you can see when you lift up the boot floor, you've got just about enough room to squeeze a charging cable, but in a petrol model, you'll have more underfloor room and also a height adjustable boot floor that comes as standard. Now, clearly this isn't gonna trouble the 625 litre Skoda Superb, but then that is one of the biggest boots around. So you can see that in the C5X, this is clearly gonna be big enough for your holiday luggage. As standard, you get handles in the back, which when you pull them can drop the rear seats and they split fold 60-40, so in two lumps, rather than the slightly more practical 40-20-40 three individual rear seats folding, which some other rivals offer. But if you go for Shine Plus, then what you get is a electric tailgate as standard. The engine lineup consists of three very familiar choices. There's two petrols and one plug-in hybrid. Now for the petrols, there's a PureTech 130, 
and a PureTech 180, both engines that we've tried in plenty of other Citroen and Peugeot and Vauxhall products as well. And the hybrid is called Hybrid 225 and it gets a claimed 34 mile electric range. Now, there's no diesels, there's also no manuals, so every engine is gonna get an eight speed automatic gearbox. And in terms of how the lineup might develop in the future, the platform that the C5X is built on can, in theory, take a fully electric version of this car. But Citroen hasn't quite yet confirmed whether it's planning to release that or not. Full pricing for the C5X is yet to be confirmed, but it's expected that the entry-level model is gonna be priced from around 26,000 pounds, and the range-stopping plug-in hybrid version will push the price up to around 35,000 pounds, which, given the broad range of competitors this car is up against, is actually pretty competitive. But what do you think? Are you impressed with the C5X? Would you rather that Citroen had done something a little bit different with it? And what other rivals do you think this car is going to be up against? Tell us in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed this video, make sure you're subscribed to our channel because we've got lots of other new car reviews and reveals going live every week. And if you do want a great deal on your next car, don't forget, go to whatcar.com for exactly that, where right now you can save more than £2,500 off the Citroen C3 Aircross. Thank you.